A blessed and pleasant good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to another edition of Morning Prayer, brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of Belize. Today is the 16th day of June, and it's a beautiful day here in lovely Dangriga. It is slightly gray and overcast with hardly any wind blowing, but just on the edge of the horizon, just right where that line is, where the sky seems to touch the sea, there's just a tinge of pinkish orange trying to peek through. And I know that that's the promise of brighter things ahead of us. I do pray you are having a beautiful day where you are. And I invite you to continue with me this morning with our opening hymn. This one called Lord God of Morning and of Night. Let's have a listen. A beautiful one there indeed, Lord God of morning and of night. We continue then with getting our words here up on screen for today, July the 16th. And let's see if I could make that happen in three, two, and in one. There we go. <laughs> the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. 
words from Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 20. If you are reading along in your books of common prayer, we continue on page 35 with versicle 2. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We will exalt you, O God, our Savior, and praise your name forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our prayer of intent can be found on page 36. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Our first canticle for this morning is the canticle de Jubilate, which can be found on page 37 and is based on Psalm 100. O oh, shout to the Lord in triumph all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. His loving mercy is forever. His faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. At this time, I invite us to pause briefly to call to mind those things that in thought, word, or deed we would have committed, things that may have been displeasing to Almighty God, things that might have been unjust to our neighbors, or things that might have been unkind, even to our very selves. For these times and these moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Together we pray. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins. Whoops. <clears throat> forgive us our sins, known and unknown things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, we have the reading of our psalm, and our psalm appointed for this morning is psalm number 34. Let's have a listen. The psalm appointed 80. Here. The first reading is The Psalms appointed 34 I will bless the Lord at all times His praise shall ever be in my mouth I will glory in the Lord Let the humble hear and rejoice Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord Let us exalt His name together I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon him, and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I call in my afflictions, and the Lord heard me, and saved me from all my troubles. He, angel of the Lord, encompasses those who fear him, and he will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. He young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. 
Come, children, and listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who among you loves life and desire long life to enjoy prosperity? Keep your tongues from evil speaking and your lips from lying words. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to root out the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry and the Lord hears them and delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and will save those whose spirits are crushed. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him out of them all. He will keep safe all his bones. Not one of them shall be broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished who trust in him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Leading us in the reading of the psalm just now was Miss Alyssa Smith, and Miss Alyssa is reading in honor of her uncle, Mr. Rudolph Williams II, and her brother, Mr. Landon Smith, who are both celebrating birthdays today. Our second canticle for this morning is the canticle, The Song of Christ's Glory, based on Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 through to 11. Christ Jesus was in the form of God. But he did not cling to equality with God. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and was born in the likeness of men. Being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in earth and on heaven, and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our Bible reading for this morning comes from Numbers chapter 12, verses 1 through to 16, and reading in honor also of the birthday of her husband, Mr. Rudolph Williams II, and her nephew, Mr. Landon Smith, is Miss Rona Williams. Let's have a listen. The first reading is taken from Numbers chapter 12, verses 1 to 16. While they were at Hazaroth, Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Cushite woman whom he had married, for he had indeed married a Cushite woman. And they said, Has the Lord spoken only through Moses? Has he not spoken through us also? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very humble, more so than anyone else on the face of the earth. Suddenly, the Lord said to Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, Come out, you three, to the tent of meeting. So the three of them came out. Then the Lord came down in a pillar of cloud and stood at the entrance of the tent and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forward. And he said, Hear my words. When there are prophets among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to them in visions. I speak to them in dreams, not so with my servant Moses. He is entrusted with all my house. With him I speak face to face, clearly not in riddles, and he beholds the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. When the cloud went away from over the tent, Miriam had become leprous, as white as snow. And Aaron turned towards Miriam, 
and saw that she was leprous. Then Aaron said to Moses, O oh my Lord, do not punish us for a sin that we have so foolishly committed. Do not let her be like, a, be like one stillborn whose flesh is half consumed when it comes out of its mother's womb. And Moses cried out, O oh Lord, please heal her. But the Lord said to Moses, If her father had but spit in her face, would she not bear her shame for seven days? Let her be shut out of the camp for seven days. And after that, she may be brought in again. So Miriam was shut out of the camp for seven days, and the people did not set out on the march until Miriam had, had been brought in again. After that, the people set out from Hazaroth and camped in the wilderness of Paran. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We want to thank Miss Rona for leading us in the reading there from Numbers 12 and Miss Alyssa for leading us in the psalm. We want to wish a happy and blessed birthday to Mr. Rudolph William II and Mr. Landon Smith. If you allow me a few seconds to get back to the beginning of this very juicy reading <laughs> from Numbers chapter 12, verse 1 through to 16. Did you notice what just happened there? Mm. Sibling rivalry and punishment from God is exactly what happened. There it is. Thank you, Jesus. It came up. In case you couldn't realize, I was having a bit of technical issues. Um, I keep getting a message that my computer needs to restart. But in Jesus' name, we're going to restart it after morning prayer, not a minute before. Here we are in Numbers 12, and we're continuing to look at the journey of the Israelites um, into or towards the Promised Land. And we have been hearing some um, challenges coming forth. Now, we remember that yesterday, was it yesterday or the day before, we spoke of Moses foolishly questioning God. And we spoke of yesterday, God forcing the people to eat so much quail um, that he had promised they would come out through, the, it would come out through their nose. And <laughs> while we didn't come out through their nose, what we did hear yesterday was that the people who were eating the quail um, so feverishly and with great exuberance um in the midst of their chewing they drop dead and it <laughs> it gives us a, a picture of god it gives us a, a side of god a glimpse into a side of god that we don't generally think about when we think about god we think about jesus gentle jesus meek and mild when we think about god we think about the holy spirit creator provider of strength when we think about god we think about god the creator um of all the things in nature and everything else that is beautiful and comes with it. We hardly think of God as the disciplinarian. And when I say disciplinarian, I don't mean one that sits around that has a big stick that is going to go boom, 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 if you make any type of mistake or anything like that. We think of God the disciplinarian as a God of justice, one who is definitely going to ensure that you are answerable for your actions. Because that is how the system works. And here we get a perfect example of that. So clearly, clearly, things have not been a hundred percent between the people in the camp. And Moses was feeling, you know what, a little bit overwhelmed, which is why he got the assistance of the 70 from God. And he definitely is now needing to have help in order to work through this thing. And Nothing is wrong with that. But what happened when the 70 got a little bit of the power of Moses through the spirit of God, then people began to question Moses' authority. And let me tell you, is one thing when the world out there that you do not know begins to question your authority, but when your family, those closest to you, begin to question, accuse, and criticize you, it's a different sort of matter. And you know it. You expect that, you know, but then your own flesh and blood is how we generally term it, no? And in this instance, in Numbers chapter 12, it was dissension between Aaron and Mir of the dissension of Aaron and Miriam between them and Moses. And Miriam and Aaron, Aaron the brother, 
of Moses and Miriam, his sister, who would have put him in the basket. Yes, um, they bring an accusation against Moses and they're criticizing Moses because of the wife that he married. Yes, and let me tell you, it is true. The Lord had commanded that the people do not marry outside of their race. But consider the fact that Moses had been sold, well, not sold, but Moses had been put in the basket in the bulrushes and um, then be brought in by the daughter of Pharaoh, raised as an Egyptian, had to run away in order to save his skin, was out in the wilderness and there would have met Jethro, his father-in-law, and end up marrying one of Jethro's daughter. Now, Jethro was not an Israelite, which is why he was not in captivity in Egypt, but in the wilderness with his sheep and his family. Jethro was a Cushite, and so Jethro's family would have been Cushite people as well. Simple, yes? But here comes Miriam and Aaron, thinking that they are the greatest Israelites that ever lived, sticking according to the teachings of God, and they bring an accusation against Moses. And there they speak against Moses because he had married a Cushite woman. And then they question his authority because he had not done exactly according to them what the Lord had commanded. Now, if the Lord chose Moses after he had married this woman, yes, if the Lord had selected him, handpicked him, took him from following behind Jethro's sheep to lead this bunch of sheep, disobedient as they were. Yes? Who are we to question, yes, what the Lord had chosen? Now, Miriam and Aaron did not consider this. Mm -mm. This was not their first thought. This was not their reasoning. All they knew is they must have had some contention with Moses or with his wife, and they were now going to challenge Moses' authority. And listen to how they fix it. Has the Lord only spoken to Moses? So 70 people just prophesy in the camp. Why is Moses the sole authority? Seems to be what they're saying. Yeah? Has he not spoken to us also? I mean, yes. Aaron has been the mouthpiece. Moses asked for Aaron to come. Aaron was the one whose staff shoot flowers from the top. Yes, Aaron was the one who had been with Moses side by side through the plagues in Egypt. Hmm? And Miriam. Not Miriam who would have convinced the women. Not Miriam who would have spoken up on his behalf and ensured that he was saved from being slaughtered as a baby. The same Miriam who would have ensured his mother was there to nurse him until he got to a certain age. Yes, Miriam and Aaron did have a play, part to play in God's plan unfolding. That is absolutely true. But here, they are inflating their importance because they want to criticize Moses. Hmm? Has God not spoken to us as well? And what happened? The Lord heard what they were said. And yes, it is God who had chosen Moses. And the reading tells us, now Moses was a very humble man, more so than anybody on the face of the earth. Man, let me tell you. Yeah? I mean, because of this statement alone, it was clear that these people were challenging his spiritual authority. This Egyptian woman, he had married the Kushite, because the Kushite were Egyptians. Not Egyptians, sorry, Ethiopians. Um, this woman that he had married, it seems as if though Miriam and Aaron are saying, mm -mm, this, this can't be. This can't be. She might be steering him wrong. Yes? Some might regard it as a pro problem, yeah, that the wife was Ethiopian, but it was God. And why did God choose Moses? Because he was more humble than anybody on the face of the earth. And the questioning by his sibling was meant to tear down Moses. Yeah? We asked with the assumption that Moses was too spiritually proud, which is why the readings have to talk about humility. The idea was that Moses arrogantly presented himself as the only spokesman of God to Israel. And in one sense, the, the, the answer to their question was no. God spoke through several people. Again, Aaron and Miriam. Yes? He spoke to the 70. We heard it yesterday. But 
in another sense, the answer to their question was yes. God had spoken only through Moses. He appointed Moses as the leader of Israel. And God used Moses as his spokesman to Israel and as his spokesman to all the nations on behalf of Israel. That Miriam and Aaron were trying to lift themselves up. Yes, trying to tear, lift themselves up by tearing down the brother. And let me tell you a secret. Still today, and I will, I will let you know, if you think that you have to snuff out somebody's candle in order that your light will shine brighter, know that you are dead wrong. Extinguishing somebody's flame doesn't make your light any brighter. Your flame is still your flame. And Moses and, no Moses, Miriam and, and, and Aaron, you know, they wanted to, they wanted some of the authority and attention that Moses must have been receiving by God's appointment. But this is God's design. Moses had a singular position of leadership over Israel. Israel was not led by a Congress or a committee. It is a singular type of leadership often seen in the Bible. Joshua will become a one-man show. David will become a one-man show. Daniel, Peter, Paul, they will have assistants that work with them, but they become the mouthpieces. And of course, when God heard this, God did not take lightly to this accusation that they were bringing against his servant. God always does and hears according to the truth, you know. God does not hear according to mere appearance. Miriam and Aaron, as is often the case, were accusing Moses of the very same motivating sin that they had. They were accusing him of pride while being boastful in and of themselves. Mm. And many of the times, this is where the statement that Jesus will make in the New Testament come from. Don't bother try taking out the splinter out of your brother's eye when you have a whole mahogany tree growing in yours. They were accusing Moses of being boastful and lacking in humility, but here they were doing so because they wanted attention for themselves. No, man. I often tell people, you could only accuse others of doing things that you yourself are capable of doing. Because if you can't conjure it up in your mind, you will not be able to accuse anyone of being able to do it. Hmm? Think about it truly. Think about it truly. And these two accusing the man. But Moses was humble. He didn't have a problem with pride. On the contrary, those of his accusers did. He was a genuinely humble man. He didn't, never once do we hear him acting in a dictatorial manner. Never once. He always humbly came before God. He stupidly asked some questions sometime like the day before. But it, the reading itself tells us more than any man on the face of the earth. So humble was he that nobody can compare to him. Hmm? And God defends Moses. He answers the accusation of Miriam and Aaron. He makes a dramatic appearance. Yes, the Lord said to Moses, you and your brother and your sister come to me like a good parent. You know when siblings are having a rival at home and mommy say, Ala uno come here. You don't know everybody One time. But, <laughs> but like a good parent, the Lord summons all three of them. Yes? Come to the tent of meeting and they came out. Because clearly they were having a problem. And the Lord came down dramatically in a pillar of cloud and stood at the entrance of the tent. And he then challenges, yes, challenges Aaron and Miriam. Hmm? And he brings it to them. Hmm? Here are my words, he tells them. When there are prophets among you, I make myself known to them in visions and I speak to them in dreams. So yes, yeah, yes, I do use other people, but I come to them in particular ways. And it's interesting because you notice the reading says suddenly the Lord came to Moses. So God didn't take any delay in dealing with this. He wasn't allowing Miriam and Aaron to go far with their ridiculousness. Many of God's judgment come, you know, 
are long in coming. He got patience. He, he, he is merciful. He not really deal with us according to the nature of our sins right away. But in this occasion, mm -mm, he brought this matter for clarity quickly. Wasn't about that. And yes, right there at the tent of meat, the tabernacle, the holiest of the places in the camp. It seems as if though God took it personally. He had a powerful interest in this important matter. He wanted to make his plan known. Yes? And he lets them know. Mm -mm. Yes. I reveal myself in visions and in dreams, but that's not what I do with Moses. I don't come to Moses in dream. I don't send Moses vision. I have so much confidence in Moses that when I come to Moses, I come to him face to face. I have entrusted him with all of my house, with all of these people. I speak to him clearly, not in riddles. He doesn't have to try to decipher what I am going through. The basis of the complaint of Miriam and Aaron was essentially what's so special about Moses, right? Why only him? And here comes God explaining exactly what was so special about him. What's so special about him is that I have chosen him. He is mine. I have decided to have great unhindered intimacy with him. Face to face, I will see him. Now Moses' face was not literally beholding the literal face of God. But he enjoyed direct, intimate contact and conversation with the Lord to the point that when he came out, his face was shining and he had to hide himself from the people because they were afraid. Because the glory of the Lord was upon him. What the Lord was saying was, this is my servant that I selected. How dare you question my selection? And this is where it's going to get difficult for us. Yes? Because sometimes we don't like the leadership that is placed over us, true or false. Hmm? But we have to trust that God puts people where he needs them to be in order to accomplish his plans. It's that simple. And nobody's asking us to support the works of a negative leader. No. We're asking you to trust that God is working his purpose out. And Moses was a good leader. And we're going to see how good his leadership is in a little while. Because when the Lord had finished saying all of these things to them, yeah, he questions them, why were you not afraid to speak over whom I selected? Yeah? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them. And it seems as if though, Miriam was the culprit who started all of this. Because when the cloud of the Lord went away from the tent, Miriam was covered in leprosy. Her skin was as white as snow, the reading says. So she must have been the one who started all of this. Now, it doesn't tell us why she started it. Yes? But she was the one that seemed to get the brunt of the punishment. And when Aaron looked and saw Miriam, that she was full of leprosy, then Aaron rushed to Moses and listened to his words. Oh, my Lord. I hear call the man Lord and say now that you are humbly before him when you just finished question his authority. You see it? You see how two faced people could be? Hmm? He just finished complaining that the man was, you know, where he get the authority from. And now he come, oh my Lord, do not punish us for our sins that we have foolishly committed. It's interesting how when you find yourself in a bind, the same people who you sometimes deal negatively with are the same people you have to put your tail between your legs and curl up and come back to. You must learn to treat people with a certain amount of respect and with a certain amount of kindness considering that all are from God. Don't make titles blind your eye. Don't make outward appearances cause you to judge other people. Look to see the God that exists within everyone and to recognize that each one is charged with a responsibility from God to fulfill, to fulfill a purpose for God. 
That's it. They just finished quarrel with the man, talk about his wife and his family, question his authority. And as soon as a little adversity come, yes, recognizing that it is God himself that is, his pun that is punishing them be on behalf of Moses, what they do? Throw themselves down at Moses' feet. Be careful of the people. You know how you treat the people that you meet on your way up the ladder. Because they are the same people you will meet on the way down. Be careful. And Moses. Moses in his humility. Moses in his kindness and generosity. Yeah? After he sees his sister and he hears the crying of his brother on behalf of his sister. What does Moses do in verse 13? He cries out to the Lord. Oh God, please heal her. In other words, just like that, Moses forgave them. He didn't hold it against them. He could have said, mm -hmm, make she stay there with me, she leprosy, you see. If it talk bad about me. Mm -mm. Handle that yourself. Go and ask God for healing yourself. Didn't you question my authority and my relationship with God? Why you come to me now? Moses could have said all of that. But he was a humble man with a heart for God. And he pleads to the Lord. Please God, heal her. It's his sister. He doesn't want to see his sister punish. But God had other plans. Because God had taken it personally. God was not about to let her get off the hook so easy. And so the Lord said to Moses, If her father had put spit, had but spit in her face. So if her father had denied her when she was born, she would have to live with that shame for seven days. And like a good father, or like a father, I am spitting in her face. So she will stay with her leprosy for seven days. Put her out of the camp. Eh, eh. You see it? My goodness. Hm. Mm -mm. As much as Miriam and Aaron did not want to recognize it, Moses did have a unique calling and equipping before the Lord. And when they criticized Moses, they did not speak against Moses as the president of Israel. They spoke of him, they spoke against him as the servant of God. They were not only criticizing Moses' ability to lead, they were criticizing God's ability to select a servant that he knew was capable for the job. You be careful of how you criticize people because you don't only criticize them and their ability. You are criticizing God's ability to choose them and use them. Moses and Miriam and Aaron should have been afraid to speak against Moses because their criticism was petty and over something beyond their control, the wife of the man. He done married the woman. They should have been afraid to speak against Moses because their criticism was simply not true. Moses was not a proud man. He was one of the humblest men upon the earth. They should have been afraid to speak against Moses because their criticism was prompted by, prompted by their own selfish interests. They were jealous and wanted some of the attention that Moses was getting. They wanted that for themselves. They should have been afraid to speak against Moses because he was chosen as the servant of God. Touch not the lads anointed and do his prophets no harm. But they were not afraid, they were bold. They were bold, like most of us are bold, to criticize others and to judge others without realizing that the yardstick we measure people by is the same yardstick we have to measure ourselves with. They were bold. And let me tell you, the consequences of your judgment on others. Yes? The consequences of your judgment on others could come with harsh punishment from God. Miriam felt the punishment when she became leprous. And she didn't become small sores. It developed instant, instant case of leprosy. Walking dead. 
God, as it seems as if God caused her body to reflect her heart full of disease. Hmm. The contrition that they must have then felt to cause them to plead. Yes? But the justice of God. It's not that God didn't hear Moses' prayer for Miriam. He did. He did heal her. But he had to allow her a time to deal with what she had done. If he had instantly healed Miriam, her heart probably would not have been changed. But the fact that she had to live with that shame for seven days, examine herself inside and out for seven days, is probably what was necessary in order to bring the change that she needed. So God not only healed her from her leprosy, he probably healed her from the inside out as well. And he also used her as an example for the whole nation to see. Come up against Magai Moses and that could be your fate. She was shut out of the camp for seven days. Appropriate because she had done wrong and she needed to heal to come back. The interesting thing is God did not allow Moses to walk away and leave her behind. Because even though her heart was not in the right place, he was giving her these seven days as a chance to restore herself, to find within herself what was necessary for her to come back after having reflected and being in good graces with God. He didn't leave her behind because even when he is passing his just judgment upon us he still has hope that we will return she tried to bring down a leader of God's people with petty false and self-interested criticism but even with all her faults and flaws God still saw beyond them to her need. Her need was for a change of heart to take place. And through his punishment of her, that's what God delivered. And still waited for her to be restored. If you don't think we serve a merciful God, a God of justice, here it is in this story several examples for us be careful of how you question and criticize others and their ability because those things are given to them by God trust that God is always in control and be thankful that a merciful God even when he judges us still waits with open arms to receive us home even after we fly in his face. Miriam was restored physically and spiritually. So too can we be. Amen. Let us continue then with the profession of our faith the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. <clears throat> I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
as our Savior has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. For our suffrages this morning, we use suffrage C. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Our first collect is the collect for the day of Pentecost, chapter 6. Keep, O Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion. For the sake of our Saviour Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. At this time, we turn to our personal prayers of intercessions and thanksgiving. This morning, we want to send birthday greetings for the following individuals. Celebrating a birthday today is Mr. Marvin Velasquez, Mr. Darren Grant, Ms. Rebecca Broster, Mr. Rudolph Williams II, and Mr. Landon Smith. We pray, lady and gentlemen, that you will have a blessed and beautiful birthday and that God's blessings will be upon you, not just for your birthday, but for all the remaining days of your lives. Happy birthday! We continue to give Almighty God thanks for persons who have recovered from illness and surgery and we continue to pray for those persons who are still on the road to full healing and recovery. This morning we remember in our prayers Miss Judith, Miss Ines, Miss Pauline, Miss Rose, Miss Grace, Miss Celine. We pray for Miss Maria, Miss Norma, Miss Mary, Miss Marilyn, Miss Verolyn and Miss Abelina. We will pray for Miss Monica, Miss Eileen, Miss Des, Miss Aislin, Miss Justine, Miss Lisa, Miss Soila, Miss Beryl, Miss Janet, Miss Nina, Miss Elena, and Miss Louise. We remember and pray for Miss Margaret, Miss Sylvia, Miss Janice, Miss Dylan, Miss Alma, Miss Leslie, Miss Crystal, Miss Amelia, Miss Venancia, Miss Elona, Miss Fiona, and Miss Catherine. We pray for Miss Betty, Miss Rita, Miss Marva, Miss Gloria, Miss Celestina, Miss Jessica, Miss LaShawn, Miss Althea, Miss Teresa, Miss Laverne, Miss Caroline, and Michelle Vadim. We pray for Miss Agnes, Miss Marta, Miss Loretta, Miss Barbara, Miss Ruby, Miss Arlette, Miss Yolanda, Miss Janice, Miss Glenda, Miss Joyce, Miss Sheila, and Miss Gretchen. We pray for Miss Esme, Miss Helen, Miss Alma, Miss Maud, Miss Elma, Miss Delvarine, Miss Daphne, Miss Geraldine, Miss Myrtle, Miss Kim, Miss Dominique, and Miss Pat. We pray for Miss Laverne, Miss Mona, Miss Dorla, Miss Molly, Miss Amy, Miss Jean, Miss Gladys, Miss Isme, Miss Lorraine, Miss Liz. Miss Margaret, Miss Cecilia, Miss Elva, and Miss Doreen. In our prayers, we continue to pray for the following of our brothers. We pray for Mr. Zane, Mr. Larry, Mr. Kenrick, Mr. Wilfred, Mr. Marvin, Mr. Philip, Father Eric, and Mr. Jeffrey. 
We pray for Mr. Rudolph, Mr. Finley, Mr. Costa, Mr. Oscar, Mr. Freddy, Mr. Dion, Mr. Charles, and Mr. Edmundo. We pray for Mr. Dudley, Mr. Rupert, Mr. Enrique, Mr. Robert, Mr. Rodney, Mr. Ishmael, Father Jerris, and Father Constancio. We pray for Mr. Leroy Jr., Mr. Dion, Mr. Alfred, Mr. Ian, Mr. Michael Griffith, Mr. Michael Samuels, Mr. Michael Soberanis, and Mr. Basil. We pray for Mr. Wilmot, Mr. Russell, Mr. Kurt, Mr. Gilbert, Mr. Lyndon, Mr. Mark, Mr. Emmett, Mr. Tony, and Mr. Ian. We continue to remember and pray for all those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. We continue to remember and pray for the family of Miss Daphne Kemp, the family of Miss Consuelo Escalante, the family of Miss Doreen Belial, the family of Miss Norma Welcome, the family of Mr. Carl Leacock, the family of Miss Lanisha Jones, the family of Mr. Tony Humes, the family of Miss Audrey Coleman, and the family of Miss Maria Ital Smith. We pray for God's comfort and healing to be upon all those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, and we pray for return and rest for those who have died. We continue to pray for God's protection over our loved ones who are far away from us. We remember and pray for our students, praying for Tammy, Anwa, Karina, Courtney, Akua, Ashley, Brittany, Rhea, Kai, Elton, and Arian. We remember our loved ones in the military, praying for Jason, Emil, Prince, Jade, Gavin, Charles, Barry, Sam, Ishan, and Alvin. We continue to pray for the protection and enablement of all medical professionals in the performance of their duties. We remember and pray for our doctors, praying for Drs. Molina, Manzanero, Chogreen, Arana, Joseph, Sosa, Lawrence, Eck, and Cuellar. We pray for our nurses, praying for Nurse McKim, Nurse Gill, Nurse Herrera, Nurse Aurel, Nurse Cherie, Nurse Joycelyn, Nurse Alberta, Nurse Aaron, Nurse Alejandra, Nurse Olivia, Nurse Julie, and Nurse Ashley. We remember and pray for all persons that work within our medical system, those in positions of administration, those in the pharmacy, radiology, the cooks, the Adleys, the cleaners, the security officers, the drivers, all who offer of themselves for the care and the well-being of others, both in public and private institutions. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for healing for persons who are infected with COVID-19. We pray for those in the various form of isolation. We continue to pray for the ready availability of a cure and a vaccine. We continue to pray for the containment and eventual elimination of this COVID-19. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for the combating of the economic fallout caused by this pandemic. For persons who would have lost employment, persons whose salaries would have been reduced, for all who are struggling to make ends meet. We continue to remember the most vulnerable in our society, praying for the poor, the needy, the elderly, those with pre-existing conditions. We remember and pray for those who have none to pray for them. We pray for those who are afraid to lay their problems before Almighty God. We remember and pray for all persons who are facing any type of substance addiction or any form of mental instability. We continue to remember and pray for our security forces, for the government, the churches, church leadership, all persons in position of public trust and authority. We remember and pray for all private sector and non-governmental organizations, all who are engaged in the fight against COVID and in any other form of humanitarian aid. We continue to remember and pray for the members of the international community, those most severely affected by this pandemic, by the ravages of war, by discrimination, by domestic violence, by abuse. 
those who had been affected by the ravages of natural disasters. We continue to pray for God's protection over them and over ourselves and our region as well. For the prayers of our hearts that our tongues cannot confess, we pray that Almighty God would hear our prayers. We conclude our intercessions by praying together, Almighty and Eternal God, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments, that under your protection now and ever we may be preserved in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. By means of announcement, brothers and sisters, I want to thank you so much for joining me for morning prayer this morning. It is indeed a blessing and a privilege to be able to greet each new day in your presence and in the presence of Almighty God. Mm. It's a beautiful day here in Bangriga, waiting for the clouds to lift and the sun to shine through. I want to remind you of our broadcast schedule for today. I believe that following this, we have noonday prayers at midday. Then there is evening prayer at 5 p.m. There is compline at 9 p.m p.m. as well. No, evening prayer is at 5.30. Compline is at 9. I'm waiting to see whether or not we'll be able to have Bible study this evening. I know the bishop is um, traveling in, and in meetings and I'm not certain that he will be able to bring us Bible study for this evening. But I will keep you posted as to how that would work for later on today. So be on the lookout on our Facebook pages for any notices regarding Bible study later on this evening. Outside of that, I want to thank you for joining me for morning prayer. And of course, I want to thank you for your continued support of the work and the ministry of the Anglican Diocese of Cadiz. We're going to wrap up this morning with our prayer of dedication, followed by the grace, the dismissal, and then our final hymn. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and to serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll close off with one this morning entitled, Christ is made a sure foundation. Why it is all the way down there, I have no idea. <laughs> I do pray you have a blessed and beautiful day. Please do all you can to keep yourself and your family safe. Until tomorrow morning, same place, same time. God bless and bye for now.